Hi, I'm Chris Ann Hall, and I want to talk to you today about something very, very important. Something that happened yesterday that I'm afraid will go completely unnoticed. Yesterday, the Department of Justice, several cities within the United States, several municipalities linked up with the United Nations to form a global police initiative. It is called the Strong Cities Network. Am, am I just uh, mouthing conspiracy here? No. I want to share with you the speech that the Attorney General Loretta Lynch gave before the United Nations. This is such an attack on our Constitution. This is such an attack on the sovereignty of our states. This will eliminate the rights of the people as we know them under a constitutional republic. I want to show you this is how we will have the UN Arms Treaty. This is how we will have UN control in the United States. It will bypass Congress. It will bypass the treaty process. It will be implemented on the local level so people will never even notice. This is how the UN property uh, policies have be are being applied in the United States through local initiatives. And now we're going to see a global police force. Look how easily the federal government has partnered up with our local police force, completely defying every limitation established by our Constitution. And now, through this local initiative, we are going to see international intervention within our local governments and our local police force. You don't have to believe me. I want to share with you parts of Loretta Lynch's speech. And you can go uh, to my Facebook page and get a, a uh, link to this speech as well. I will put a link on the bottom of this video so you can go to this and read the entire speech for yourself so you know that I'm just not cherry picking and making this up. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to be reading a large portion of this speech because it is so rich with things that should be screaming warnings to Americans who want to preserve the Constitution and preserve our inherent liberties as we know them, as they were established to be ours with a limited government. You know, the, the very beginning of Loretta Lynch's speech is just really disturbing. And so I'm going to start at the very beginning. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio, for those kind words, for your dedication to promoting equality and expanding opportunity for your service to the people of this great city, the city I call home. I would also like to recognize High Commissioner for Human Rights, Prince Al Hussein, and the UN Habitat Program for their inspiring work and bold leadership as we work to create a future of sustainable peace, development, and opportunity. America, this is the intervention the incorporation of foreign influence and foreign law that our framers warned us about. George Washington warned us in his farewell address. He said, uh, against the insidious wiles of foreign influence, I conjure you to believe me, fellow citizen, that foreign influence is the most baneful foe of a Republican government. He said that it would be the destruction of our liberty. And here we have the, uh, the Attorney General of the United States and mayors from our cities embracing this very thing that our framers warned us about. She says, I'd like to thank all of the mayors and other municipal leaders who are helping to ensure safe and prosperous futures for our communities and our world by serving on the steering committee of the Strong Cities Network. This is the name for this. Now, I have searched all over the UN website. You cannot find a web page for the Strong Cities Network yet. We will keep watching and see when this comes up. But this is an initiative that was spearheaded yesterday in New York City and will come to fruition in spring of April, uh, spring of 2016 in Paris, France, at the UN meeting there. She says, It is a pleasure to join a distinguished group of leaders on this historic occasion, and it's a privilege to represent the Obama administration. Really? When did we have an attorney general that represents an administration? Do you see how far we have deviated 
from a government of the people, by the people, for the people. We, the people, in order to form a more perfect union, now have an attorney general that represents an administration. Now you see where the loyalties go, right? Now you see why there is absolutely no focus on the Constitution and the rights of the people because there's no loyalty to it. The loyalty is to the Obama administration. And then, as I guess, is an afterthought. She adds, and the United States. As we inaugurate this initiative, collaborative, and critically important global effort, this is the globalization of America. We need to understand that. We cannot allow this. This is a complete and total attack on who we are. She says, it is a pleasure to join such distinguished group of world leaders on this historic occasion. And it's a privilege to represent the Obama administration in the United States as we inaugurate this initiative, collaborative, and critically important global effort. It is clear that the challenge of building resilience against violent extremism, a challenge that spans vast oceans and borders while impacting our most tightly knit cities and towns, neither I, the justice, Neither the Justice Department I lead, nor the administration in which I serve. You see, there's that loyalty again. Neither the Justice Department that I lead, nor the administration that I serve, will ever back down from our commitment and our responsibility to safeguard our citizens and defend our homeland. The government of the United States is fully invested in this collaborative approach. Do you see where the loyalty is in this? This is, this is very shocking. This is not something that we should be embracing. Turning over our local governments and our local police force to a global initiative is complete loss of control for a people over their government. How are you going to control your police force? I mean, what happens if you get a police force that becomes corrupt and out of control? You no longer have a hand on your police force because they will now be directed and funded by not only the federal government, but by global influence. That is not a government of the people. That is a government of itself. She continues and says, through our model regions program, that's the program where the federal government has infiltrated our local law enforcement, completely setting aside every aspect of posse comitatus without actually implementing, right? Federal officials have partnered with a wide array of local stakeholders, including government, public safety officers, social service providers, educators, businesses, and nonprofits to build and implement community resilience frameworks. This is your foreshadowing that this safe, uh, this, this city's network, right, this strong city's network will not just pull in your cities, but it's going to pull in every aspect of your cities down to the minute administrative aspects of who you are. Do you see this? Social service providers. We are now going to get United Nations and foreign government influence in social services. Do you know what this means? That means that the human rights uh, platform of the United Nations to, ch to rob parents of their parental rights is going to be implemented on the local level. This is not tinfoil hat stuff. I am reading you the very text. She says, these efforts have shown us the power of harnessing our local expertise and leveraging local leadership to created, targeted, and effective approaches to eradicating, once again, violent extremism is the word that she uses in any community. We have learned that an open dialogue and consistent engagement with a wide range of constituents is essential to crafting strategies and forging partnerships that will address the full scope of the threats we face. What is that full scope? What is that full scope? She says, we have observed a need for that mechanism that will expand to the most effective efforts to reach people around the globe. What is that scope? That scope of partnership is now global. Because she says, until now, we have lacked that mechanism. 
we are making the first systematic effort in history to bring together cities around the world to share experiences, to pull resources, and to forge partnerships in order to build local cohesion and resilience on a global scale. We lost control of our local governments when the feds came in and started funding and directing. What's going to happen with a global scaled initiative. She says, by connecting municipal leaders, facilitating information, sharing and providing training and other assistance where appropriate, the Strong Cities Network will help to fashion a global response to a global issue. She's not talking about connecting municipality leaders in Dallas, uh, Sacramento, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, Atlanta, or New York City. She's talking about linking all of those cities with Paris, with uh, cities within France and Italy and Spain, and bringing in a global network of foreign law, foreign influence, and foreign initiatives into our local governments. She says, I want you to know that the Obama administration is deeply committed to ensuring that Strong Cities Network is as strong and vibrant and resilient as the city it, cities it unites. There's that loyalty again, not to the Constitution or to the people, but to the Obama administration. And I want to tell you, I would be just as outraged if this was an attorney general who was talking about our loyalty to the Bush administration. This is not how we formed a constitutional republic. This is a totalitarian leadership. She says, resilient as a city it unites, connecting those localities to one another. As the Strong Cities Network is doing, it is not only a powerful way to uplift our communities worldwide, it also sends a message, she says, about who we are and what we aspire to be. An alliance of nations as a global community. I just simply want to ask you, is that who we want to be? Because that's who we're trying to be. That's who our government wants us to be. That's who our cities are going to make us be if we just sit back and remain distracted by Donald Trump, budgets, and John Boehner. We keep being distracted by congressional hearings over emails that are never going to do anything. They're just smoke and mirrors. They're just dog and pony shows to distract us from what is going on right underneath our noses. And I just want to ask you, because that's the choice, I am not here to influence you to believe any certain thing whatsoever. I want you to be aware of what's going on. And I simply want to ask you this question. Do you like this? Is this who you want to be? Not a government of people. Not a place where governments are instituted among men, deriving their just power from the consent of the governed. And when any form of government operates contrary to those means, it is the right and the duty of the people to alter or abolish them. I just want to ask you, do you want to be a global initiative? Are you happy being a global community where government knows best and international rule will dictate policy to us down to the very minutest of levels. Is that who you want to be? Is that the place you want your children to live in? Because the choice is up to you now. I've brought you the facts. I have told you what our government is doing through their own words not tinfoil hat, not strange extrapolations. These are direct quotes and direct applications. So what do you want to do, America? Who do you want to be? Who do you want our children to be? And that's the last question of the day.